I don't necessarily think everybody needs to be on supplements. And I, I think that's a need is I'm taking that word very literally there. You can't supplement your way out of a poor diet. You cannot like think that taking that pill, like, like that herbal pill or that vitamin, whatever is going to somehow undo an unhealthy, un nutrient less diet. So you have to, to me, I see supplements or natural medicines, herbal, botanical, like uh, options for people. I see them as targeted tools to fill in the gaps where diet isn't hitting a therapeutic threshold. The component to the conversation is soil depletion and food, therefore food uh, nutrient density has decreased. So Yes, I think we have to be more intentional than ever before to make sure that your food medicine, your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks are the best options that you have with the access you have within your budget to do the best you can there. So I, I do think that meals should be your primary medicine. Um, so I start there. Um, but because our food supply isn't what it once was, and we are not getting as much out of our food as we did for the majority of human history. There is a place for targeted supplementation or target, targeted natural medicines. So it depends on where your baseline is too. So it depends on where, what is the context of whoever we're talking about. Because some people, and this is bio-individuality, this is the heart of functional medicine, what works for one person or what's needed for one person, even if it's healthy, it may not be needed or wanted for the next person. So it's definitely important to understand like who we're talking about as well. Because some people have a very strong uh, resilience and a metabolic fortitude where they don't need a lot to get by and they're going to be healthy. They feel all right. Their labs look all right. They're not really uh, suffering, right? Um, and at that point, if they're eating clean foods, then there obviously there's not a great need to supplement uh, maybe vitamin D depending on where they live in relation to the to the equator but even that I think some people can get by and live a long healthy life if they have this sort of large you know if we use the analogy of like a, a mug like a tea mug or a coffee mug they have a large mug to stressors in life and they're not going to overflow very easily they're going to get by on life they're going to eat rather rather clean uh, and be all right. Some people have smaller mugs, so to speak. They have smaller genetic thresholds to stressors, uh, and they are going to overflow pretty easily. And their body has specific genetic SNPs, genetic variants, or an uh, un unhealthy gut, which isn't absorbing foods as readily, uh, where supplementation is going to uh, r allow the person to reach a therapeutic threshold that's going to serve them well. Because we aren't just what we eat, we are what we absorb. And if people are not either converting nutrients appropriately from foods, meaning the bioavailability of certain nutrients from our foods, or their gut's not healthy and they're not absorbing, absorbing foods to actually assimilate it and utilize it on a molecular level, then supplementation makes more sense for those people. In the day and age that we live at today, that's higher than ever before. When you look at the amount of gut issues, the amount of inflammatory issues, which inhibits absorption in, on a cellular level and a microbiome level, and these genetic SNPs, which have been around for 10,000 years, but are being triggered like never before because of the onslaught of, of stress and toxins and all this stuff. There's an argument for supplementation now more than ever because of these variables, but it should be secondary to food in my opinion.